from Allen Hall on the campus of Onondaga Community College in Syracuse. ESF TV presents college basketball. Today, HBIAC action as the SUNY ESF Mighty Oaks hosts the Five Towns College Sound. Hello, everybody. Alongside my aptly named broadcast partner, Adra Rossignol, I am Brandon Ross. Plenty of action today. The 6-6 six and six Mighty Oaks taking on the 5-7 five and seven Five Towns College Sound. And this has been an interesting season for the ESF Mighty Oaks. A 6-6 six and six record, but a couple of tough losses as of late. Absolutely. They're coming off two losses right here now. So they had more playing time as of coming off a break than Five Towns, but they're looking to get a win here today. And action getting started here as the ball's tipped out of bounds. And Five Towns College has the possession. The sound five and seven on the season, three and one in HVIAC play. That has them fourth in the conference. SUNY ESF at second. Into the corner with Williams. On the baseline, drive, Sawyer. No good, Kyrie Sawyer with the miss. Team's leading scorer with 23 points per game, unable to deliver there. It's Paradise, he fakes it. A flommer straight away. Into the paint. Kick out, three ball, yes sir. Logan Amelie gets the triple. He gets the first points of the ball game. ESF going with the half court press here. The five towns breaks it. Merritt, short. Rebound grabbed. Williams fighting. Tries to go up, rejected. Gets his own rebound on the floor. Now back to the elbow. Action slowing down. Back down low again. On the wing. Triple. No good. Two shots, two misses for Kyrie Sawyer. Paradise other end. Goes through contact, no good. Up straight away, now to the wing, Sawyer. Along the baseline. Free throw line, it's Braithwaite. Short jumper, and it's in. Robert Williams, the freshman from Hicksville out on Long Island, gets the first two points of the game for the sound. Only five points scored so far through the first two minutes of action. Five towns playing a full court press and defense is something that head coach Greg Drizel of Five Towns is putting a heavy emphasis on. Absolutely, they want to push that tempo. As you can see, they're ready to move that ball working around ESF defense. Flommer from the block, no good. Paradise with the board. Back down, turn around, short. Rebound grabbed by Braithwaite. It's Merritt running the points. Into the lane, Williams. Down low. Here's Merritt. Rims out. Paradise cleaning up everything. Team's leading rebounder with 8.4 per game. Reed Patchett, short one, it's good. The six foot six freshman from Geneva gets his first pair of the game. ESF up by three. Sawyer, knives into the lane. It's in, off the glass. Heave down low, Patchett, easy lay in. ESF catching Five Towns sleeping early on here, Audra, and there's a timeout on the floor. 
Allentown's coach is reminding his players to move that ball and to spread out on the court. It doesn't matter how much speed you're having, you need to make sure that you have even men on both sides so you're moving that ball and reversing the defense every time. Something that we had heard from the coaching staff of Five Towns before this game is that pushing the tempo would be important, but just as important is getting back on defense, and right there, Reed Patchett took advantage of a wide open lane. Absolutely, those fast breaks are easy points, and ESF is not going to let those points go unhad. So it's 7-4 ESF, more than half, four of them coming from Reed Patchett, the freshman from just outside Rochester. Just came off of his game high of 15 points. A season and in turn career high against Jefferson Community College. Down low, Merritt, turn around, no good. Now Dormer poked out of his hands, turnover. Opportunity for five towns with numbers. Short jumper, Merritt, got it. It's a one point gain, Darian Merritt with his first two of the night. Or check that the afternoon. Flammer running the point for ESF. Team's leading passer with five assists per game. Just dribbles in, short three, no good. Rebound, Amelie, poked away. Another short corner jumper, it's in. Reed Patchett's feeling that stroke already. Six points early for the freshman. Sawyer, kick out. Marin, yes. He's up to four quick ones. The five foot ten guard out of Brooklyn making his mark early. Here's Dormer holding. Paradise. Into the corner. Long two. Got it. There's Zach Dormer. Team's leading scorer, 20 points per game. Missed the last outing against OCC. Back in the lineup for the Mighty Oaks today. Up top with Sawyer. Into the corner. Long two. Rims on out. Kissed every single corner of the rim, but did not go down. What a catch there by Paradise, keeping that from going away. A real athlete at six foot four, Cole Paradise, the junior out of Owego. Gets a screen, down low, Dormer through contact, gets his own rebound, and puts it back in. Dormer coming off of an injury, ready to get back on the court. Four quick points for the junior out of Naples. Here's Merritt. Into the free throw line, Sawyer, jumper, no good. Nothing's going down for Kyrie Sawyer. Only a couple on four tries. Into the lane, Emily with the easy lay-in. He's up to five already. That's a third of ESF's points, almost doubling up their opponent. Dribble in, Merritt through traffic. Gets it in off the floater. That was fancy. Now he's up to six. That's the tempo we thought we would see from this Five Towns offense. Now they're only down by five. Dormer in the post, gets it in. And in turn, that's a quick six for him. Up tempo movement here from Five Towns. Working on the perimeter. Down low. Pass swatted away and taken back by the Mighty Oaks. Three on three, fast break, slowing it down. Dormer again in the paint. Turnaround jumper, yes! Eight points for Zach Dormer. Timeout on the floor. ESF is beginning to see what Five Towns is doing each time they take it down baseline and they're reversing it up to the top opposite corner of the paint. So if ESF is able to stop that, then they're not gonna have any scoring for Five Towns. Head coach John D'Antonio of SUNY ESF told us before this game that the most important of things for today would be starting out fast. And so far they're doing that up by nine, just about seven minutes in. Absolutely, if they get that tempo going right in the beginning, it, beginning, they tend to stay up high and that's what that, the coach of ESF wants to have throughout this whole game. And meanwhile, for five downs, 
one of the Kings they needed to do was win the rebounding battle. They're outsized by the starting lineup. They have no starters under six feet for the ESF Mighty Oaks. Meanwhile, on the other hand, three starters under six feet for five towns, and they're not winning that battle right now. Absolutely, you can see if that shot's not going in, there really isn't anybody down low in the paint to rebound, so hopefully five towns is gonna be sending some people boxing out, getting a body down there, because you never know who's gonna win that rebound. Not a ton of physicality so far. About seven minutes in, no fouls for either team. It's ESF ahead by nine over five towns. Both have a strong freshman presence, two freshmen just going in. Latrell Ward, a Long Island native. It's a poked away on the pass. One of two new additions to the roster for five towns. As Emily drives the lane, puts it up, rolls out. Rebound grab, Patchett to the wing. Three ball, off and out. It's Tavon Bazemore, the transfer from Pace, one of the freshmen just joining this five towns team, running the offense for the sound. Goes back to Ward. Wing three. Off the back and out. The long board to Michael Bowen. Only the ninth game he's played in this year. Pass down low, Patchett over contacted in. Eight points for Reed Patchett. There's no answer for the six foot six freshman right now. Merrick gets the long jumper. Give him another pair and he's up to eight. Quickly across the timeline. Now to Bowen, ignores the screen. Now opposite corner, down low, Emily in. Beautiful passing by ESF right there. And the sophomore, Emily gets it through. An 11 point margin, ESF out in front. Up top, Ward, corner, Merritt three. No, Emily gets it, now fighting. Rebound grabs, and Williams with the finish. Team's leading rebounder, eight and a half per game. Being productive on the glass right there. Shot clock's gonna go down to 24. Substitutions coming in for each side. Matt McFarland checking in for ESF. Along with Reed Patchett re-entering. Hey, transition right here. Mike, get out of there. Transition right here. Matt right McFarland here. holds over his head the six foot two freshman from York. He also came off a career high against Jefferson Community College, 13 points. Paradise wants a screen. Ignores it. Spins, pass to Patchett. Back to Paradise and a foul call. Hey, hey, Little too aggressive there from Tavon Bazemore. On the floor, so an inbound coming underneath the bucket. So far the offense very potent for ESF, nearly a doubling up the Five Towns Zound making the trip up here from Long Island. Absolutely, Five Towns wanted to push that tempo and ESF is answering back with just as fast movement of that ball. Three ball from Paradise, no good. Bazemar going up to get that rebound. Now Ward running the point. Bazemar to the elbow, down low, swatted away. Sawyer recovers for Five Towns though, Paradise with his first block of the game. Six seconds to shoot to the wing. Baseball. Now to Ward through contact. No good. Greg Drizel, the head coach of Five Towns, was yelling at his players, seemingly unaware that the shot clock was running down. Emily drives baseline. No good, but the foul. Foul's going on De Damani Merritt, that's his first. Five foot 10 freshman from Brooklyn. 
That sends Logan Amelie to the stripe. Not the best free throw shooter this season, just 59%. These are easy points to be had. And there's an easy first. Everyone. Amelie up to eight. Everyone is important. Substitution, Michael Bowen exits. Henry Flommer, the starting guard, six feet tall junior, checks back in. And Amelie drills the second. Nine quick points for the sophomore. And Ward quickly the other way. As Sawyer slows it on down. Sawyer loses it. Recarouse through traffic. Kick out. Ward, no good. Paradise with yet another rebound, making use of that six foot four frame. Here's Flommer. Down low, Patchett gets it in. That's where the size advantage is making an impact. Every starter for ESF above six feet tall, three starters for five towns, not even six feet. Pass deflected, intercepted. To the wing, Amelie, down low, patch it, turns, fires, no good. Almost had it over Tavon Baseball, but now on the other end, Sawyer. Shot did not go, foul on the floor. That's a foul on Logan Amelie, a reach in. That's his first. As a mass substitution for both sides. Here's Jackson towards the paint. Corner now. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Jackson pressed in the corner. Dormer gets a little too reachy. That's his first foul. The junior has a tendency for tra foul trouble. In this same meeting last year, Dormer fouled out in what was an overtime win, 106-99 in favor of the Mighty Oaks. Inbound to Merritt. Sawyer baseline, under the cup. Can't get it out. Dormer getting the finger on it, running the fast break, down the lane. Floater, no good. Paradise, no good, but the foul on the putback attempt. A very risky shot from Dormer in transition. Paradise cleans it up and gets a chance for two. Dormer had his momentum going when he was going to that basket, and he was not stopping. And Paradise with the cleanup goes for his first trip to the line. 71% from the stripe so far this season. And the first shot goes down. His first point tally of the afternoon. And the second free throw is good. Quick moving offense, Dormer takes it away again, and another foul. This one on Kyrie Sawyer, the junior from Bayshore. Thousand point scorer for the sound. So far, just two for the first 11 and change. Here's James Squire. Paradise, pump fake. Goes back to the wing. Spin around. Corner, Squire for three. Rims out. Sawyer, quick transition. Right lane. Puts it up. Rolls, no good. Cleaned up by Nigel Brightwhite. Ten seconds left for the sound to shoot. To the wing now. Five seconds. Braithwaite, three ball. No good. But rebound, corralled. That shot did not get the rim. Oh, 
Oklahoma. On, Five guys. Towns College head coach Greg Drizell. Rather unpleased with the shot clock. It's been a little faulty here today at times. They're getting a fresh 19 inbound swatted back. That can happen when you have a big height advantage there. Absolutely. Quick jumper. It's out. Rebound. Swatted away. Another re-corral. Sawyer free throw line. No good. Finally, ESF gets it. Five Towns can't make anything of the second chance opportunities. Three from Squire. Out. Quick transition to the other end. Through the paint. Down low. Sawyer gets fouled. Paradise thought he had all ball. Instead, it's his first foul of the ball game. Foul is actually called on Flommer. Might be helpful taking the foul. First one goes through. Sawyer, a thousand point score for Five Towns College. Reached that milestone in a 96 38. Yeah, that's actually a score. 96 38 win over Webb Institute back in December. And with both free throws, he is up to four points. Free throw line. Paradise for three. All out. Wide open lane. Here's a long two. No good, Paradise gets another. Fifth in the conference in rebounding, making his presence known down low. McFarland, floater from Flommer, not even close. Couldn't get enough mustard in midair. Baysmore, a three, yes. That's Uncontested, going straight in, freshman shooter. His first three points as a member of the Sound. Long Island native, started the season at Pace University in Westchester County, transferred to Five Towns to be closer to home. Here's a three, Flommer can't get it. And long board for Braithwaite. Sawyer, can't hold on to it, gets it. Baysmore, wide open. Off front and out. Great wave with the rebound. Floater off the backboard and in. For knowing they don't have as much height as ESF, Five Towns is able to get those floaters and those pump fakes going to get those points down low without a height advantage. At one point, this was an 11 point game, a little closer now. Eight separating ESF and Five Towns with 544 left to go in the first half. And the rebounding battle has been key. So far, it's been ESF, mainly Cole Paradise, dominating down low. Absolutely. ESF wants to keep this lead, so they're going after the ball. Doesn't, they're trying to pick up any mistakes that Five Towns is making, and that includes rebounding. The height advantage playing well in the Mighty Oaks' favor. Short lineup for Five Towns, especially since a couple of their six-footers, Ismail Shabazz and Eric Romero, are both out from this game. to patch it. He's got 10 already. Emily into the lane. Elbow. Patchett can't get it. Paradise gets the board again. Tipped, but re-corralled. Inside the arc. Dormer, no good. He gets a travel called on him. Pivot foot came up for Zach Dormer. Trying to add to his already eight points. And now it's with Bazemore who has three. Free throw line pass. And Sawyer gets fouled. That's Dormer's second. And he's got to be a little careful now. Might have to consider putting him on the bench. Coming off an injury, he wants to have as much playing time as possible. Watching those fouls is very important for that playing time. Dormer used to getting a lot of run in these games. Back. 
Second most average playing time of everyone of anyone on the ESF roster. The only one with more. The man with the ball, Logan Amelie. He chucks up a three. No good. Into the lane, corner three. Braithwaite gets it. His first three of the afternoon. The sophomore from West Hampton Beach makes it a six point game. Baseline drive and another three for Flommer. Check that, another two. The six foot guard from Elba Central High School gets his first points of the afternoon. Here's Bazemore, floater, well short. Here's the two on two fast break chance. Dormer, easy lay in, no, he doesn't get it. That's as much of a gimme as you can ask for. Sawyer, under the cup. Bazemore for three, well short. Paradise got the hand in his face. Disrupted the shot. Dormer laying. That time he gets it and the foul. What a way to make up for that last missed layup for Dormer. Welcome back to the floor, Zach Dormer. He's already up to 10 and has a chance for one more. He's a high caliber scorer, 20 points per game. Six of the nine games the Mighty Oaks have played this season, or that he's played in this season, he's reached the 20 marker. Rebound for Patchett on the missed and one. Emily can't get it. Second chance, he gets fouled. Foul goes against Robert Williams, that's his first. Logan Amley already with nine. Five towns with only a bench of three. And he there's the first. The fouls. Emily hits double digits, and you just mentioned it, a very short lineup for this five town squad. That one misses, and Sawyer moves it the other way. Straight away, here's Braitwave. And the new freshman to the squad, Latrell Ward, controls the offense. And a kick ball on Dormer. So far, it's been a lot of presence from the freshman, Latrell Ward and Tavon Bazemore getting a lot of run in their first outings for the Sound. Free throw line. Now long to Braithwaite. Got it. Five points for the sophomore from the Hamptons, and it's a nine-point game, three minutes left in this first half. Down low, Dormer gets it in. No answer for Dormer today, he's got 12. Here's Ward, floater, no good from 10. And Dormer, another fast break chance. He's getting all of these today. 14 for the junior. On the other end, Sawyer counted in the foul. He says, hey, anything you can do, I can do better. Gets the lay-in and the chance for one more. Sawyer with six. And he completes the three-point play. Make it seven for the 5'11 junior. And Flommer gets around Ward. Screen from Patchett. Baseline drive. Turn from Flommer, through contact, gets it in. His second bucket of the afternoon. And ESF up by 12. Five Towns working the perimeter, keeping the tempo up. Long to Braithwaite. Off the iron, Paradise with the board and an over the back. That's against Damani Merritt, his second. 
He's got to be careful. Again, you mentioned the short bench. Only three players available in relief. Check that, four. Nick Sinkamani, Obasi Jackson, Tavon Bazemore, Latrell Ward, the only options coming off this sound bench. Discussion happening between the officials and the scorers. Paradise with the free throw chance. Can't get the second. On the wing, Baysmore drives the lane. Down low, Williams over Patchett and in. Williams bringing in some height for the Five Towns team. Tallest man in that starting five at six foot two. Second tallest on the roster, only behind Obasi Jackson, who's currently on the bench. Here's Paradise. Spins, fires, travel. That's another opportunity taken away by a travel on ESF. Only a couple so far, though. And the Mighty Oaks up by double digits with just over a minute left to play in this first half. Here's Middlebrooks. To the wing. Now Williams, 15 to shoot. Into the lane, Sawyer swatted away. They called it clean and a turnover. Looked like contact there. Only one Five Towns player rushing for the rebound. But it went straight out of bounds. And now only 30 seconds separating shot and game clock. Three ball. Off and out for McFarland, the foul called. That's against Reed Patchett, his first for the Mighty Oaks. Only man in real foul trouble right now is Zach Dormer, the junior has two. Patchett, Paradise, and Amelie all with one each. Baysmore crossover, long two, off right. Bounce pass off the foot of Paradise. So that'll be an inbound from the baseline. Obasi Jackson checks in for Tavon Bazemore. The freshman gets a rest. And the senior from Brooklyn into the game. Into Braitway through traffic. Only 12 separating shot and game clock. ESF up by 11. Middlebrooks. To the wing with Jackson, short. ESF can hold for the final shot. Patch it. Paradise. Free throw line. Here's a three from McFarland. No good. And no shot at the buzzer for five towns. So ESF will carry an 11 point lead into the locker room through 20 minutes here at OCC. A dominating performance throughout for ESF, but the real battle is being won down low with the Bigs. Absolutely, they have that height. They're using it to their advantage. And we see them walking into the locker room looking pretty content with how they play on the court. 41-30 ESF over five towns. Halftime in Syracuse. We'll be back in a minute.
SF is heating up 41 to 30. The Mighty Hooks ahead of the five downs college sound here at halftime at OCC. Alongside Audra Ross, I'm Brandon Ross. Audra, this was a game where a lot of focus was going to be put on things like rebounding, things where size was going to matter. And to this point, that's gone in favor of the Mighty Oaks. Absolutely, they have the height and they're using it to their advantage. Five Towns wants to come in with speed and ESF is answering that also. So with both those two things in hand, it's no wonder that ESF is up coming into the second half. When we were talking with head coach Greg Drizell of Five Towns before this game, one of the things that was emphasized was pushing the tempo, getting the pace to where they can score frequently. But right now the sound held to just 30 points through the first 20 minutes. Absolutely. As much as their speed is coming in, they're almost afraid to get deep inside the paint because of the blocks and things like that. So right now their floaters are what's saving them, outside shots. And if they can get those, they might be able to pull back during the second half. Going back to the keys to the game that we had mentioned with Five Towns and Coach, there are a couple of those other ones. You talked about the reading, pushing the tempo, and another thing that they need, they need those freshmen to show out. Absolutely, both teams have a strong freshman presence, five on each side. And as you can tell, there isn't a deep bench for Five Towns, only three deep, and so they're really looking forward to those freshmen showing their skills and being able to get a lot of playing time at such a young age. The only three bench players, Obasi Jackson, Tavon Basemore, and Latrell Ward, those last two each playing their first game in red for the sound. Meanwhile, for the ESF, ID Oaks, starting fast is their model, and boy, did they did that do that today. Absolutely, they're looking to get it in deep, outside the three-point range. Not sure if they're really focusing on either specifically, but both are connecting right now for sure. And strong defense, another emphasis. Head coach uh, John D'Antonio says that it leads to good offense, and so far, showing on the score column up by 11. Absolutely, those turnovers are what they're looking for. They're trying to get those fast breaks, move the ball, and with that, they're gonna be able to score some points here in the second half. You can't see him in frame there, just entering at the end. Zach Dormer, top scorer on this ESF team, came in averaging 20 points per game. He's leading the way with 14 through the first 20 minutes. Absolutely, he is also Student Athlete of the Month. You have to remember, all of these people playing on the court here, these guys are all students. They're all, this is not their full-time job. So it's amazing that they're able to balance academics and athletics at the same time. That goes for all of them, both Five Towns and ESF. But right now, athletically speaking, ESF, the more dominant squad. Five Towns trying to re-corral, heading into this second half, down by 11. Came in with a short bench. We talked about the three men available off the bench. And all the scoring so far has come down to four people. Kyrie Sawyer, Robert Williams, Damani Merritt, and Nigel Braitwave. None of them striking double digits yet. But all of them still making an impact. Same starting five for both sides. Only starter yet to score for either side is point guard Lloyd Middlebrooks, normally number one, wearing number 10 for the Five Towns College Sound today. Here's Flammer running the point. He had four in that first half. There's Dormer. Wide open in the corner. Amelie through the baseline and gets it in off the glass. Logan Amelie, the sophomore from Palmer, is up to 12. In the paint, Sawyer up top. Here's Middlebrooks. Five Towns forced out. Driving, no shot, foul on the floor. And that's a charge against Damani Merritt. He's got to be really careful. That's his third already, less than a minute into the second half. Patchett has it, he is dominant as well today, he's got 10. Flommer drives into the paint, short corner, the jumper, can't get it. Dorr can't get up to 16 with that one. Pump fake from Sawyer. Another jumper, that one good from Merritt. He is the first sound in double digits. He has 10. ESF approaching this offense with a little slower tempo, but no slowness from there from Amelie, who can't get the layup. He's missed a couple of those so far today. Middlebrooks into the lane. 
And Sawyer drills it from 14 feet. Uncontested that shot. The team's leading scorer has nine. Wing three, yes sir. Only the second triple of the game for either side. That one from Henry Flommer, a 32% three point shooter. ESF tightly crowding the perimeter. 10 seconds left to shoot. Three ball from Merritt, nothing but net. ESF knowing the five towns is an outside shooter, trying to shut that down. First three for five towns today, and Merritt, the freshman from Brooklyn, up to 13. Paradise, rejected, gets his own rebounds. Three ball, can't get that. Fast break for the sound, long jumper, can't get it. Nothing's falling from long range for the sound. Emily has it in space, into the paint. Another drive. Emily tries to go through contact, and he gets fouled. ESF Shooting foul on Nigel Braithwaite, that's his second. ESF not being afraid to get down there with as much defense as Five Towns has down low, still going for the layup. Every man on the floor for the Mighty Oaks is six foot or taller. Same can't be said for five towns. Lloyd Middlebrooks, the point guard, just five foot eight. A couple other players standing at 5'10 and 5'11. It's Imani Merritt and Kyrie Sawyer. 18 point game, Merritt can't get that one. Paradise continuing to dominate the boards. Dormer weaves his way around, gets the Eurostep finish. 16 points for the junior. Here's Middlebrooks on the fast break. Free throw line, Sawyer, yes. He's finally into double digits, he's got 11. Finally starting to catch some fire after a very silent first half. Dormer has space, gets it in. Dormer just can't miss. He has 18. Heave to Braithwaite. Sawyer tries the Euro step and gets it in through Patchett. Sawyer was giving up seven inches, but no problem there. Middlebrook playing that defense. Looks to have an injury on his left shoulder. Has been using his right as much as possible. Certainly can't help when, as the point guard, you have to run the offense. You have to be capable of dribbling with both hands and passing capably with both hands as well. Into the corner with Merritt. Middlebrooks puts up the floater. No good from 12. Dormer in transition from the block, rejected. On the other end, Middlebrooks, Euro step, can't get the finish. Sawyer on the second try, counted in the foul. 13 for Sawyer. He's got the chance for one more. The conference leader in points per game is now up to 14. Brandon Ross, Audra Gnostic. Audra Rossignol here with you. We're now joined by ESF men's basketball player Trevor Hansen on the broadcast. Trevor, how you doing? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us here. It's a nine point game as Zach Dormer gets called for the charge there. Yeah, we definitely like when we have Zach heading towards the basket. He's certainly not afraid of being aggressive. He has that six foot three frame and for a four, you gotta love that, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Especially we can get him out on the fast break, running in transition. The way he, uh, the way he can attack the basket when he's out, has the ball in his hand. It's, uh, it's definitely when we're at our best. He sometimes moves at the speed of light, like a blitzer going across oh, for the sure. line of scrimmage in football, 
and he just flies, and he still has that ball control, which you don't see with many guys his size. How do you right. think that plays into his ability down low? Um, as he's, a, he's a great finisher when he's up in the basket. I, uh, we've already seen a couple times in this game where he can go up, he can change the shot in midair. He just has great ball control, and he has a great feel for uh, great feel for finishing when he's inside. Mighty Oaks up by nine right now. What do you think is really working well for you guys? Timeout called on the floor. So again, nine point game right now. Offense seems to be clicking. What in particular is working well? Um, we're getting inside well, like I said. Um, especially getting Zach inside, like we were just talking about. Um, at the end of the end of the first half, excuse me, we had a. Uh, I think we shot six or seven threes in a row. Um, I think you know sometimes we get a little three heavy, but I think if we run our offense, we run it, we run it right. We set good screens. We get guys inside finishing like Zach. We get Reed, even Cole in there. Um, I think we'll be in good shape the rest of the way. Five Towns, a team that runs a very up tempo offense, moving down the floor Definitely. quickly, trying to get that shot like within the first ten, at most fifteen seconds. How have you guys tried to put the halt to that so far, and seemingly pretty well up to this point? Um. Earlier in the first half when we were we were using our press, it was working pretty well, but uh, it's just about slowing down and it's also slowing them down, excuse me, but it's also about getting back first and uh, getting our defense set up. Trevor Hansen, thank you so much. Audra, you got anything? I was just curious that you were on the team last year as well, so you can definitely tell that there's a strong freshman presence this yeah, year. Definitely. What's it like having all those people, guys come into onto your team and be able to start right off the bat? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, it's great. It's uh, it's really encouraging for the future. Um, we only have one senior on the team now, but when we get a uh, freshman in here like Reed and Matt, guys that are just that play really well and play really hard, and they practice really hard too. It's just uh, it's it's awesome to see, and it's uh, it's really encouraging for the future of the program. Awesome, Trevor. Well, we appreciate you coming in and hanging with us for a little bit, and we look forward to seeing how ESF does in this second half. Awesome. Thank you so much. Seems to be a little bit disagreement on the floor right now. The shot clock didn't reset, so Five Towns a little bit rushed. But Bazemore still getting the bucket. He's up to five on the game. Chance for six. Shot clock issues have been a recurring theme here at OCC. There were some issues early on in our last broadcast we did when SUNY ESF was at home taking on Pratt Institute. Seemingly settled for now. The bucket from Baysmore cut the deficit to seven. And he finishes the three point play. Six points in his sound debut. Number 10 versus number 10, Flummer trying to get past Lloyd Miller Brooks. Five Towns coming in fast with their defense. Looks like they're moving into more of a 2 3 zone here. Into the lane. Paradise can't get the alley oop finish. Middle Brooks controls. As the sound slow things down. Poked away and intercepted. Emily in no hurry to get across half court, but Bazemore with the takeaway. Here's five downs. 15 foot jumper, yes! Looking for those elbow shots to not get blocked down low. Damani Merritt has 15. And now it's just a two possession game. Patch it. Baby hook, no good. Middle Brooks quick. Sawyer drives baseline. Gets contact and the bucket. No foul called, but now five towns only down two. Matt McFarlane, the freshman at six foot two. Just chucks it out of bounds. Timeout called by ESF. And Five Towns, Audra, has rocketed 
its way back into this ball game. They were down by as many as 12 at certain points. Absolutely. Down they're, two. they're ready to get their fire going for the rest of this half, and they want to be able to get the ball in the basket. That's their main choice to bring their score up. And with that, they have to up their defense on ESF, be fast. They have the speed to contest with ESF's height, so that's what they're going to use to their advantage right now. Five Towns getting a lot of help from a freshman and a more experienced player, Damani Merritt. Five foot ten out of Brooklyn. He's got 15 points. A down in performance for him, and then of course, a key player to the game for Five Towns, Kyrie Sawyer, the junior, with 16. Guys like that that are able to perform are gonna be really looked at to give a lot of the points up for this half and make sure that they're staying right up to tempo with ESF. Sawyer had 24 points against the Mighty Oaks last season, played all 45 minutes of that overtime thriller. That is a lot of time to be on the court. That just goes to show how he's able to pace himself and make sure that he's able to use the last minutes of the game to his advantage. He's got a high motor, loves to be on the floor, averaging 38 minutes per game out of the 40 possible in regulation. Five towns with the chance to tie or take the lead with a triple. Into the corner, Williams. Baysmore now tightly pressed. Closing out the perimeter. Braithwaite for the lead. Got it! His first triple of the ball game, only an 18% three-point shooter did not face him. Five towns ready to get back into this game. They only count it as a long two. So we're still tied at 52 apiece. Down low, Paradise. A reach in called on Baysmore. That's his second. Call it off ball. ESF trying to reclaim the lead. McFarland hesitates. Five seconds to shoot. Three ball. No good. Middlebrooks gets it. In transition. Great wave. Gives Five Towns the lead. The long two to tie and the righty finish to put him in front. For the first time in this ball game, the Mighty Oaks are trailing. Bazemore with the interception, and he's called for the foul. That's his third, and he is not happy. Well, they're calling it on Cole Paradise. They're calling it intentional, so two freebies for Tavon Bazemore. That first one misses. He's got six points so far in his sound debut. Graduate of Connect Quad High School out on Long Island. Can't get the second either. So nothing gained from the intentional foul. And in turn, a good foul on part of ESF. But it's still sound basketball. The Sawyer checks back into the game. Robert Williams takes a seat. Check that. It's Nigel Braithwaite getting a rest. Poked away. Emily. One on one, poked out of his hands. And they're gonna call a foul. I'm gonna say contact was made by Lloyd Middlebrooks just as first. Number three, 
Five Towns head coach Greg Drizell has had a lot of grief to give over some of the foul calls so far today. And ESF cuts the deficit to one. Emily already up to 13, coming off a 16 point performance in the loss back on January 9th against OCC on the shared home floor. No good. Still a 1.5 Towns lead. Baysmore for a triple. No good. Five Towns trying to close out the perimeter. McFarland. Flommer has eight seconds to Dormer. Through contact, it's long. Sawyer down the floor quickly. Merritt gets it in. 17 for the freshman. He scores at an incredible rate. Fifth in the conference in field goal percentage. 47% coming in. In the corner, Squire. Too long. Dormer recovers. And a foul. Block called against Damani Merritt. And he's already up to four. And there's still more than 10 minutes left to play. ESF down by three, a hair under 11 to play. And still plenty of shot clock left for ESF. A team that's lights out shooting, second in the conference with a 43% clip. There's a long shot. No good from Henry Flommer. Five Towns coach pushing, pushing his guys to get down the court fast. And Bazemore called for the charge. And now he's up to three. And foul trouble becoming a consistent issue for the sound. Baysmore with three, Merritt out of the game has four, and Braithwaite has three. Here's McFarland, hasn't scored yet today. Squire for the triple. Can't get it to go. Here's Sawyer, hesitates. Now Middlebrooks into the paint, down low, through contact, Sawyer gets another pair. Dormer being careful not to get a foul. 18 points for Kyrie Sawyer, and Dormer down low on the other end, gets a foul. That's against Bazemore, and he has four. That's now two players with four fouls for five towns. And seemingly nothing going right in terms of getting the foul calls to go their way. Dormer gets the first. Chance to make it a one possession game. And Dormer finishes. We're going to be joined here by athletic director Dan Raymond. Dan, how has it been seeing this basketball program for the men grow here at ESF lately in these past few years? Fantastic year, absolutely. We got a, we got a barnstormer here today, man. It's a close game. This last year, this was an overtime win for us too. Open up, pull off the same. Dormer yeah, on it's the been other a, end. We can't a get really it. good year with the team. Coach D's second uh, year has been doing awesome. So we had to, one of the strongest uh, spring, fall semesters that we had with this team. So overall, in general, too, all of our sports this fall did great. Absolutely, so. and not just athletics, but as an athletic director, you have to look at these guys' grades, and they've been doing exceptionally well yes, in absolutely. their grades, keeping their GPAs up, and that's a huge part that no one really thinks about when they see them playing out on the court. Absolutely, man, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a big part of it. And, you know, ESF being a difficult STEM school, it's, it means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were just talking about everyone here coming from 
different places around, whether it be New York State or around the country, and everybody has their part here on the court, on the court, and a part on the team. And coach was also saying how it's like a family. They all come together. They all do things together outside, off the court, and it's really important to have that family aspect. I know you're more of a soccer guy, so you feel that. It's like oh yeah. your team is part of you, and it's really yeah. important to have those connections on the court and off. Absolutely. You, you, you'd be surprised with that when you have that good chemistry and how much better you play as a team. You know, So it's, it's a very important part of the game. Absolutely. Well, Dan, we thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you, guys. And, and hey, ESF TV and the folks at SU coming to help us, I mean, you guys have done fantastic. So keep it up. Well, Dan, I appreciate the kind words, and thank you for your time. Back to a two-possession game. Patch it. As 10. Emily, pump fake. Can't draw the foul. Poked away by Dormer, can't keep it in. Dormer was looking to draw the foul there. Could not. And now the ball's back with five downs. Chance to pad the lead even further up by four. By increasing their intensity, five guys has really been able to increase their score here in the second half. And that's a, another long two from Damani Merritt. He has 19. Six shy of his career high. Dormer for the triple. No good. Rebound Patchett. Second chance, gets the foul. Can't get the bucket, but he'll get two chances. And that foul is on Robert Williams, his second. Number 15, the freshman from Hicksville. Bringing the overall team to nine fouls. ESF with only four for this half. ESF talented at drawing the contact today. Got a bunch of players in trouble early as the first one goes down. And Patchett's up to 11 points. Still a three, still a five point game. Middlebrooks poked away, out of bounds by Dormer, staying with five downs. Defensive intensity has gone up quite a ways for the Mighty Oaks. Dormer with a couple of pokeaways in just the last two minutes. Here's Sawyer. Goes around the defense. Jackson with the put up. His first two points of the game. And now a quick takeaway. Middlebrooks to Sawyer. Circles it back out. Trying to find an open option. Merritt. Off and out. It's a three possession game. ESF trying to chip away. Up top, Paradise, he has four points. Flommer to the paints. Dormer, long two. Can't go, knocked out of bounds by ESF. The shots are not falling the way they were, Hadra. Absolutely. This last few, these last few minutes have gotten a little bit sloppy, both on ESF and Five Towns' part. Have to slow it down, move the ball, connect, make some points here in the last seven minutes. For the Mighty Oaks, Zach Dormer has tried to be more aggressive on defense. He's having a great first game back from injury. Already 18 points, with still just a hair over seven minutes left to play. Getting the hustle up on the defensive side, but right now, Five Towns still finding a way to get to the bucket. Absolutely, they're making their outside shots. Things are connecting for them. And right now they are in the lead, 64-57. Seven point game, three buckets needed to either tie or retake the lead. Both starting fives on the floor, the lone exception. Being Obasi Jackson, who just checked out of the game. And Obasi Jackson was still on the floor when the ball was inbounded. He was trying to get off the floor, 
But that's six on the court for five towns. That's a costly mental error that gives two easy free throws to Henry Flommer. 65% free throw shooter. Averaging 14 points per game this year, already has seven. Like we said earlier in the game, these points are the most important to make uncontested free points right here. Second chance off an intentional or technical as he gets the second and is up to nine, making it a five point game. Tavon Bazemore on five downs, who's out of the game right now, getting some rest, he has four fouls. But he had an intentional foul chance too. Free throws and the ball back. He didn't make either of them. Points missed that I'm sure he was not happy about. Little Brooks facing a double team and he's called for the travel. Another costly turnover for the sound. And the Mighty Oaks can cut it to one possession. Here's Patchett. Emily holds, he's got 13 points. Dormer, count it, and the foul. 20 points for D Zach Dormer, his seventh reaching that marker this season, and he gets the chance to one more to cut the deficit to two. A good feeling for him coming back off of that injury. Missed that last game against OCC. A 26 point loss for the Mighty Oaks. In a tight one here at OCC today. As he's up to 21 and ESF is down by two. Full court press on for the Mighty Oaks. Sawyer crosses to the wing, long two. Rims out. Five towns out, rebounded there. Catch it. Here's Paradise for three. Off and out, rebound Dormer. Can't get the put back. Emily on the third try. Tied it up points. at 64-64. And a quick transition. Great weight with the finish. Puts five towns back out in front. ESF trying to tie or take the lead with a three. Flommer, Emily, into the lane. No good, rebound, Sawyer, quick transition. On the other end, layup through contact, no good, no foul call. He gets the board, and that time he gets a call. Didn't get the foul call the first time, and the five towns bench was up in arms. Gets it the second time and now the ESF bench is up in arms. But that sends one of the best free throw shooters on this squad to the charity stripe, Sawyer, 71%. Already has 18 so far this afternoon. First one's good. And Tavon Bazemore, who has four fouls, checks back into the game. Robert Williams taking a seat. Sawyer makes this, it's back to a two possession game. Four point lead. Henry Flommer has nine points so far. Dormer the leading scorer, down low, patch it, double teams. A long two, converts. That gets Flower to double digits with 11. ESF now within one point, one possession. Baysmore. Up to Middlebrooks, too long and out of bounds. Had to leap over the scorer's table. Thankfully, he appears to be okay. But ESF has the ball back, down by two. Five minutes and change left. 
It's a nail biter here, similar to last year. They needed overtime to finish last season's meeting. ESF the victors, 106 to 99. Both teams very different, but similar when it comes to their <laughs> momentum on the court. Paradise, no good from three. Put back, fouled. That's on Williams, it's his third. Paradise can tie it up, tie it up if he makes both. That's now three players with at least three fouls for the sounds. Williams with three, Dabani Merritt and Davon Bazemore both with four apiece. So this game's not getting tough. Paradise, not much scoring production today, just three points, but he has been a bully on the boards. That can count just as much as making those baskets. Second one's good, it's a one point game. Full court press for the Mighty Oaks, down by one. Bazemore has it, block called on Paradise. And that's his fourth. He's gonna need to take a rest and that would be a big loss if he fouls out of this game. Team's leading rebounder. Two, and a prolific blocker too, averaging almost one and a half per game. Working the perimeter. Middle Brooks to Bazemore. Tightly pressed by Flommer into the paint. Puts it up, can't get it out. Shot barely goes up. Now another takeaway. Four on one. Bazemore with the easy finish off the glass. Three point game. And that's eight points in Bazemore during his sound debut today. Flommer. To Dormer. Down low. Gets blocked. And a tangle up under the cup. Foul is called on ESF. That's against Zach Dormer. Now he has four. He's the team's leading scorer today with 21. Dominant performance thus far in his first appearance back from injury. But at risk of getting lost for the rest of this game. He fouled out of last year's meeting. That sends Robert Williams for a one and one. First one goes through, and he is up to seven points. The freshman from Hicksville, team's leading rebounder with eight and a half per game. Free throw percentage, not as good. Only makes about half. But he gets both of those. Two important shots to make there. The lead grows to five for the sound with under four minutes to play. Get elbow, get elbow. Defense. Defense. Dormer at the elbow, down low, Amelie gets fouled. That might be on Merritt, if it is, that's his fifth. It is, and his night is over. A great performance from Damani Merritt, 19 points. Came off his career high in that last game against the Culinary Institute with 25. But he's out of this game with 342 left in regulation. Sound up by five, Emily with two shots. That one's through. And he is up to 16 points. The 59% free throw shooter can make it a one possession game. And he does. Just under four minutes here. Here's Sawyer. No foul call. Euro step. Gets contact. And the foul is called, but late. The ESF faithful not happy. Patchett gets his third. And that sends the 71% shooter, Kyrie Sawyer, to the line for two. Three split over, not 
A good game so far for the junior from Bayshore. Out on Long Island, 19 points. You can make that 20. Averaging 24 per game this season. The amount of foul shots being had these past, past few minutes has not left left a lot of time for playing on the court. Rebound grab back by five towns. And they'll take it slow. Sawyer, middle Brooks with space. Now Sawyer double teams. Shot clock has stopped working. And they've called a violation. The shot clock has continued to malfunction throughout this game. It went from 19 back to 30, counting down at lightning speed. You guys. And the referee yeah, had to hand count it. Go back to your bench. You're outside. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. Referee Todd Clausen talking with the scores table, trying to get the shot clock issues worked out. But on the floor, ESF is down by two possessions. Four points with a hair over three minutes left to play. Couple of their better players working with four fouls, Zach Dormer and Cole Paradise. Paradise not in the game right now. Dormer still on the floor. Greg Drizel, the head coach of Five Towns, ex continuing to express his displeasure with the shot clock issues. Another official, Jeff Miller, conversing with the head coach. Four point game right now, and Audra, looking with how this game has gone, you were talking about how all of these fouls are happening late in the game. It makes it so that some of the better players have to play a little bit more careful, sort of playing on eggshells in a sense. Absolutely, once this energy and momentum gets high, that's when mistakes are made, things get sloppy. You're slapping, you're going for the block with just a swat instead of keeping your hands straight up, and those are the kinds of things that are gonna lead to a lot of foul taking towards the end, make, drawing out these last three minutes here in the second half. And Kyrie Sawyer gets that on both ends. He had those last two free throw tries. His first attribute that contributes to that 1.7 steals per game. Doesn't lead the team, as a matter of fact. That honor goes to Robert Williams, but get, creates a lot of turnovers, but he also turns over the ball quite a bit, more than three per game. Yeah, that's something really to look at because a turnover can be just like missing a basket when it comes down to these last few minutes. Both teams still with plenty of timeouts as Greg Drizel, head coach of Five Towns, getting into it with official Todd Clausen. He's been very unhappy about the shot clock problems throughout today. And he's letting it all out here. Todd Clausen now conversing with Jeff Miller, another official. It's been a couple of minutes without any action here. You should know it. And Drizel's winning over the crowd right now, saying that they could probably do a better job with the shot clock. And now we might finally get play to resume. And they're gonna call a timeout. Three twelve left, a four point lead for five towns. Can ESF claw back? We'll find out in a minute. A break like this, you would think, would be nice to catch the breath, get a drink of water, but it really stops your momentum in the game and understanding how you're ready to push that ball. So right now, the players could feel a little awkward taking this much time to resume the game. It's definitely been an awkward pause. There's no question about it. Officials still conversing about the shot clock issues and how to handle it if something goes wrong. Coaches a little more upset. Players taking it a little more as a laughing matter. It's trying, trying to stay light when they finish out these three minutes. Both huddles in very different moods. Five towns, you see smiles, laughs. ESF, straight faces, purely focused. It seems like action's finally gonna resume here 
at Allen Gym here on the campus of Onondaga Community College. Don't forget ESF's in action tomorrow as well. They're taking on the Culinary Institute. Tip there is at one, and we'll have coverage on ESF TV. Audra will be back on the call along with John Dales. Absolutely back-to-back -back games for ESF on this long weekend. Seems like some scoring things are now being worked out. And now Greg Drizel expressing displeasure over the lack of scorekeeping. Now plays finally going to resume. McFarland has probably totaled about four and a half, five minutes of wait time underneath the basket waiting to inbound, and he finally can. Blomer has 11 points, running the offense for the Mighty Oaks. Baysmore almost with the takeaway, and here's Sawyer. No one in front of him, and the alley-oop slam! Take the points, you get the technical, but that's the way to deliver in your first game. That's four shots you needed, too. Hung on the rim a little too long, so there's a technical on that, and he's out of the game. That's number five. Hey, if you're gonna go out, go out like that. Yeah, way to make these last three minutes crawl. These right guys just wanna get back on the court and play. Things keep getting, obstacles keep getting in their way. Right now, officials conversing over how many, or either over whether it's a technical or if it is a technical, which Seems like it will be given the hang on the rim. He had a decent amount of time up there. The question then becomes how many shots? Dormer having to watch out because he was coming up on top of him a little too fast there as well. So there's a technical on Five Towns. So there was an ejection. It appears Tavon Bazemore dropped a profanity, so he is gone. And there was an offsetting foul on ESF. So apparently, there will be no shots here. Coach D'Antonio for ESF rolling up his sleeves. Seems like everyone can feel the heat in this gym within the last few minutes. It's definitely been a slow pace of play. We've played a grand total of 14 seconds of game time in the last 10 minutes, Audra. But there's still been plenty of side entertainment. It's like we're coming up the hill on a roller coaster and we just can't seem to get over the hump. Hopefully that'll happen soon. John D'Antonio ends his argument. And he will get shots. Henry Flommer will get chances. And now there's a wait for him to take his technical shot, says head coach Greg Drizel of Five Towns is still discussing things over with Jeff Miller, one of the officials today. All the ESF players are on the floor. All Five Town men are still on the bench. We're still hanging by there. But Flommer will get his pair down by six. He misses the first. Important shots to make right here at the foul line. Especially down by six. Still a two possession game. And he can't get it any closer. But the Mighty Oaks do get possession back off the technical. So McFarland and Flommer walk back to the other end. Obasi Jackson checks into the game for five towns. First, they only had four players on the court. And right now, their number of available players is down to six. Damani Merritt, the freshman, fouled out earlier. Bazemore got his fifth and an ejection. 
foul down low as the pass went into Patchett. I think we got a good five seconds in there, don't you, of yeah. movement? A, a little bit. The clock's run just a couple seconds. And the foul's on Robert Williams for five downs, and now he's up to four. If he fouls out, they got to leave the same five on the floor for the rest of the game. First one's good. Reed Patchett, a 30% free throw shooter. Gets the first, he's up to 12 today. And the six foot six freshman from Geneva. Cuts it to four. Under three to play. Five rounds trying to hold on and get the win. We move him up to four and one in conference. ESF trying to avoid its first HVIAC loss. Sawyer to Middlebrooks. Eight seconds to shoot. Poked away. Emily with the swat. And he goes out of bounds with it. But he got pushed out of bounds by Nigel Braitway. It's his third foul. And ESF gets two shots. I'm having a little ground dog, groundhog day right now. ESF at the foul line again. What, what do you think? It's been about a minute of clock in the last 15? I think so, probably around there. Sounds about right. But a couple big free throws here and now it's a one possession game. And Logan Emily, the sophomore at six foot three with 18 points. Make it 19 and ESF's down by two. One layup can get them right back here tied up. Five towns trying to maintain some distance. Sawyer. He has 20 today. 10 seconds to shoot. Jackson. On the wing, Sawyer has five. Into the lane, 12 footer. Short, rebound McFarland. And a travel called. A costly misstep by Reed Patchett. Kind of jump stepped in his place. And that takes away a chance to tie this game up or even take the lead. ESF bench looking tense at the moment. John D'Antonio looking for a defensive stop here. The Mighty Oaks trying to stay above 500, six and six coming in. Here's Ward. Great weight with 12. Still working the perimeter. ESF closing out well. Eight seconds, 12 sec, 12 foot floater, no good. Long board, rebound taken by Braitway. Down low, poked away. ESF has it back. 110 to play. Mighty Oaks down by two. Patchett, Squire, down low. Foul. That's on Robert Williams. He has fouled out. Five Towns has to play the same five for the rest of this ball game. Patch has the ability to tie it up right here with his two shots. Reed Patchett's had a solid performance so far today. 12 points if he drains both, he ties his career high of 14. Just under a minute here left in the second half. First one, can't go. Patch is just a 30% free throw shooter. He went one for two on his last trip to the line. This time yields the same results. 
He's up to 13. And a timeout called by ESF. Last year, this game went into overtime, looking like it might be doing that again this year. Well, don't jinx it. We don't know. There's still 58 <laughs> seconds to play, and five towns still out in front. But now they have to be extremely careful. Only five players left available for the rest of this game. Tra Tavon Bazemore has been ejected. Damani Merritt fouled out. And now Robert Williams, before those last free throws, also fouled out. The last 58 minutes have had a lot of fouls in it. So if there's that many this time, it might look like they won't have enough players for the court. So hopefully, Five Towns can work smart on defense and protect their foul count. Looks like we might see Nick Sinkamani, someone who originally did not appear to be available, is available and is now in his shirt. So that would give six. Good to have a break there on that bench. So Sinkamani going back out onto the floor with Middlebrook, Sawyer, Jackson, and Braithwaite. Latrell Ward, the freshman making his debut for the sound, is the only man available in relief. And foul trouble still present for Braitway. He has three. But with 55 seconds left, Sawyer draws a foul. That's on Matt McFarlane, just his first. But five towns in the double bonus. So a chance to pat it to three. Sawyer takes the free throws, nails the first. Had 23 points in the last game against the Culinary Institute, already has 21. And Sawyer makes it a three point game. Protecting that lead, five towns. Only 20 seconds separating the shot and game clock here at Allen Gym. Squire, he's scoreless. Down low, Emily, no good. Patch it with the second chance. Can't get it. Third try. Still 12 seconds separating shot and game clock. ESF down three. Squire, tightly pressed, poked away. Sawyer has it. Shot clock is off, and ESF forced to foul. That goes on Squire, his first. The senior from Coxsackie. Standing at six foot four, has yet to make a dent in the score column tonight. Five Towns needs to make these foul shots in order to protect that lead against ESF. If Sawyer drains just one, it's a two possession game and he does. 23 points for Kyrie Sawyer. He's had quite the performance so far today. He's got 24 points, and the lead grows to five with 19.2 on the clock. Five Towns calls a timeout, going to talk some things over. There's not a lot of time left for ESF, Rodra. You have to get two buckets in less than 20 seconds. And if you can't get a turnover, you have to foul. So that's another risk you draw, and you want to get it on someone good. Do you think you go for the three? Or do you think you go for the two and pray that a bucket doesn't get made? I think at this point, there's enough time to do both route, routes, but I think ESF has strong enough shooters that they could go for that three-point shot and have good odds of making it. So really, it's going to be coach's call on what he wants to run this play and have it look like. Three-pointers have not fallen for most of this game. Only two triples so far for the ESF Mighty Oaks. One from Henry Flommer, one from Logan Amelie. Both of them... We'll be on the floor coming out. Nineteen seconds, ESF down five. We'll have to go the full length of the court and five towns will put on the press. It's the freshman McFarland running the point quickly. Drives, 
Righty layup, no good. Sawyer with the board and Squire with the quick foul with exactly 10 seconds remaining. And because of the double bonus, that's two free throws coming for Latrell Ward. Has not yet registered any points tonight. Could make this a three possession game and put it out of reach, but he won't be able to do it. It'll be a six point game if he drills this one. Still two possessions though. ESF needs threes. McFarland finds Flaumer, a triple, no good. Put back goes over the backboard with two seconds left and that should about do it. Late fouls and mistakes and the inability to get the buckets proved costly for ESF and five towns gets redemption for last year's OT loss and takes it down ESF 80 to 74, the final here at Allen Gym. A big win for the Five Towns College Sound. That moves them to four and one in the conference, six and seven overall. But for ESF, this is a tough one. Down below 500 to six and seven, and now get their first conference loss. That's gonna move them back in the standings quite a bit. Hard to lose here in your home, home city of Syracuse for the ESF team. Definitely something that they probably weren't expecting today coming in with a little more game playing time than Five Towns. And if you want to pinpoint one player who's probably responsible to more than anyone else for success, look no further than the key player, Kyrie Sawyer. The junior had 24 points today for the sound, and he was unable to be stopped. Absolutely. That, that says it all. A third of the points right there on one guy, and that's absolutely a huge, huge moment for him. ESF will try to rebound tomorrow to get back to 500. They're taking out the Culinary Institute right here at Allen Gym. Tip-off is at 1 p.m. ESF TV will have coverage for you of that one. Final score here at Allen Gym, Five Towns College 80, ESF 74. On behalf of our outstanding production crew and my broadcast partner, Audra Rossignol, I'm Brandon Ross. Thank you for joining us.